John Suffredini of Boston, Massachusetts. You asked for it. Remember you wrote, I've always wondered what a trip on a man-made spaceship would be like. Well, now that the age of space exploration is almost with us, I'm ready to sign up as a passenger. Meanwhile, I'm wondering if it's possible to forecast what a ride of this sort into outer space may actually be like. Well, John, because you asked for it, we called upon the findings of Germany's leading rocket scientist, Walter Riddell and Associates, pioneers in the study of outer space travel. And here's the result of exhaustive research done in West Germany and illustrated by the animation camera. So, all aboard for a trip to a space station. This is our home base on Earth. Our destination, a man-made space station at an altitude of 1,075 miles. Our rocket launching pole and our rocket ship, 260 feet high. The passengers are strapped tightly for the tremendous acceleration of the takeoff. Second now before the launching. Rocket control tower ready. Shortwave radio standing by. Radar control tower, ready. Pilot controls, ready. Ground contacts, standing by. Crew fastened to couches. Turn on rocket motors. The man-made space station, but a pinpoint on our ship's telescope screen. There's our launching bowl down there. Higher and higher. We're pressed downward nine times the gravitational pull of Earth. The tail section is burned out and jettisoned. Our body weight is now about 2,000 pounds. The second stage of flight is ending. Middle section jettisoned. Altitude now 63 miles up. Rocket motors off. Speed 1,900 miles per hour. All is silent. The rocket and ourselves are weightless. The gravitational pull of Earth has ceased. In our cabin, there's no such thing as up and down anymore. We must wear suction cup shoes. That does it. We can even walk on the ceiling if we wish. Liquids, too, are now weightless. We can't drink. Pull the bottle back and the drops come out and float aimlessly. The answer? Plastic drinking bags. Drink by squeezing and sucking. There's the space station, only one hour's flying time from Earth. It's circling the globe every two hours at an altitude of 1,000 miles. We'll soon be overtaken by the space station. The ship and station will proceed to circle the Earth together. That receiving station for directional energy rays sent out by transmitters on Earth ensure uninterrupted reception. There's the space taxi, moved by rocket thrust. It will pick up and take us over to the station. We're 1,000 miles from home. Now inside the station, all kinds of different compartments, like a submarine. The space station itself rotates around its own axis, having synthetic gravity. Centrifugal force presses its crew against the walls, which really are the floor. But life inside is quite normal. So long as air pressure is controlled, man is safe. Outside, meteors fly past us. Most are small, quite harmless. 
But sometimes disaster strikes a single compartment. Escaping air forms a cloud of ice that clings to the station. Pressure inside the compartment drops dangerously low. If trapped here, our blood would boil like coffee. Space-suited emergency crew goes into action. They cannot fall. They are again weightless. They move about with hand rockets. Because of heat and humidity inside their suits and the harmful radiation in space, such outings are brief. They repair the damage as they cling to the revolving space station. Crew members work in shifts. We return by taxi to our spaceship for the trip home. Our pilot has plotted our flight course. Destination sighted, 1,075 miles below us. Terra firma, but one hour away. We're off again. We're circling the Earth one and a quarter times. Then, instead of falling farther, we'll fly like a glider. Wheels down. Our trip to a space station is at an end. John Suffadini, you asked for it. And so long for now.